Sunny, can you hear me? Uh, Gordon here. Hi, Gordon. I can hear you. Hi. Uh, since we are just uh, testing it, uh, can you all have a small conversation with each other? Yeah, we can. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. So, so, Sally, you work for Gulf News, so you just come in. So, yeah, no, I freelance, so I do a lot of work for Gulf News and for a, a lot of other people as well. Oh, okay. So, yes, done lots and lots of great webinars with, with Gulf News, so this will hopefully be the latest one as well. Hmm. Yeah, so what's the subject that you mostly talk about? Or is it just about anything? Yeah, the, the great thing is it's lots of different things that we do. Um, they, well, particularly for, for Gulf News. Hello and welcome to the Gulf News webinar, How Conversational AI is Revolutionizing Customer Service, brought to you by Unifor Software Systems. In a crowded and ever-growing market, businesses are doing everything they can to stand out, to earn their customers' trust and loyalty. And one of the most vital ways of doing that is by providing an exceptional, personalized customer service experience. A great experience can mean that your customers become raving fans, but failure to meet expectations can damage your brand and drive your clients to your competitors. In fact, according to Forbes, 82% of customers will stop doing business with the company after a bad experience, and even worse, roughly 80% will tell others about it. And as more and more customer interactions now take place through digital cha channels, businesses must learn to harness the power of technology to deliver an outstanding customer service experience. This is where conversational artificial intelligence or AI comes in. Conversational AI is now being used to drive highly individualized experiences where the customer always feels valued the technology analyzes customer speech and text patterns to predict emotions and intentions and responds with adaptive automated scripts at scale. Through these human-like interactions, the best conversational AI and automation platforms deliver highly personalized positive experiences across multiple channels with greater efficiency. Currently, there is a wide variety of conversational AI applications being used across all industries, from customer service to marketing to security. These highly advanced programs are helping businesses connect with their clients and employees in never before seen ways. My name is Sally Musa, and today on Gulf News, we're excited to take you through all of the different possibilities for conversational AI with Anil Kumar, Senior Director at Unifor Software Systems. Unifor has been a global leader in the conversational AI space for the last 14 years, working with many of the world's largest enterprise customers across the US, Europe, and Asia. Also joining us is Awais Ahmed, Head of Technology at Sulex Plus. Welcome to you both, Anil and Awais. Thank you. And now just before we do begin, Anil and Awais will be taking your questions towards the end of the webinar. So make sure you do have your questions ready and handy for them. And you can input those into the questions tab, which appears to the side of your screen. Now, it is great to have you both with us today to talk about how this technology can give companies the edge over their competitors at scale. So Anil, first of all, I'd love to start with you. What is conversational AI? Yeah. 
A great introduction, uh, Sally, and welcome to everybody who's uh, listening in today. Thank you for joining us. Um, question on conversational AI. Yeah, it's it's relatively new that this whole $350 billion sprung up from nowhere. Uh, and people ask, what exactly is conversational AI? Is it a chat bot? Is it somebody talking to a robot? Uh, we've seen uh, little robots running around in, in banks trying to answer questions, but they've got a little iPad or something stuck, uh, and then you go back to typing or texting using that. So conversations have been around forever. Like when we talk about human conversation, uh, we've had data, we've got uh, data science, and and slowly the word conversational AI started to creep in. Um, and the AI part of it is what makes it interesting. We've seen uh, in the good old days when we needed to contact an organization, there was one number or even an 800 number came later, but then we would call a receptionist would pick up the phone and send you down to somebody else who could probably solve your problem. And then we had IVRs and we had little phone switches that could switch the call from one person to another in different departments. Now, if we realize today, in the last 30 years, we've been talking to these IVRs. Uh, it's sometimes frustrating. You have to go to a little menu, press one for this, press two for this. It's, it's sometimes really frustrating. And then what happens is that hierarchy is then popped into a person who's supposed to know the answers. And that person doesn't seem to know all the answers at the tip of their fingers because the enterprise is so large and there's so many different departments. They have to go log through to go and get you the information that you're looking for. So uh, when did this all start to come together? The whole process is... What is the customer really asking you and how can I serve them in the shortest time and give them the information quickly, efficiently and set them down that route? So when we start to bring AI, it starts to become data. Now, let's look at what this data is. Every chat, every text, every email, every conversation at the store, every conversation into a speech agent or a call center is all become part of the digital data set that we're looking at. Now, these meetings are being recorded. We often hear the faces. Your call is important to us. We're recording it for quality and whatever purposes. But now what's happened is that's become data. Now, when that becomes data and this conversational data is analyzed and that starts to become something that we can respond to on scale based on patterns that the data is telling us. All these calls that are stored away in a contact center is now data elements that you can respond to and that becomes gold. So we talked about all of the different channels calling in, and that tends to become what we now call the voice of the customer. Now, what is conversational AI? As, as data started to pick up, then we started to have things like natural language understanding. Uh, and uh, you know, we talked about a Google employee the other day who was actually sent on a suspended because he started thinking that the robot was sentient and was almost talking to him like another human being and it was almost scary. So we that means that you start to move from keyword searches that were there before. Now we're starting to understand full sentences, figure out what that customer is trying to tell us and what that intent really is. And in short, what the data is telling us as a person, as a customer or as a community is trying to tell us. Reacting to that, in real terms, in real time, and then figuring out what trends you're trying to address, that becomes this whole gamut of conversational AI. Of course, the risk is not to assume that we're looking at a few conversations that tell us a trend, but we actually try to understand every conversation that's coming in. And that's what you talked about, conversational AI being harnessed at scale. So that's a very high level on what AI and conversational AI is becoming today. It's getting smarter, it's AI, more data makes it smart. Thank you so much for that, uh, Anil. And, uh, you know, it's a great overview. We are going to go into more of the details on, on how, you know, all of this comes about. But of course, as you, as you said there, the data is one of the most uh, powerful things that uh, is being harnessed by conversational AI and in turn feeds back into it to make it work better. So, Oasis, I'd love to bring you in here. <clears throat> Talk to us about how conversational AI came about in terms of the gap in the market that it was trying to fill? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sally, and uh, thanks for everyone for attending this uh, session. So before I begin, I want to point out 
that uh, human interactions with AI based programs are increasing on a tremendous rate. So let's go back to the history that how this all started. So Alan Turing in 1950, he gave an idea that human communication and interactions uh, should be done with the computers. So the computers should be understanding what we are telling them and they should reply to us. So this was just an idea. So the first text-based chatbot came in 1960s. It was a therapist uh, uh, software. So this was, you can say, a one of the turning point. Uh, after that, uh, AI, it went into winters and there was uh, not much uh, research or R&D was done. Uh, the revolution came when the smartphone age started. So in early 2000s, uh, the designers were thinking how can they fit the websites on different kind of screens because different kind of mobiles came and different sizes. So they were thinking how we can, you know, uh, interact in a more better way than to have the websites. So in 2001, a smart child, it was one of the AOL uh, chatbot. It was a turning point in the evolution of history of uh, conversations. So it can be through chatbots uh, or why uh, IVR calls. So between 2010 and 2016, there were uh, huge developments in AI. So we entered the modern era with uh, Siri, Cortana came, Google Assistant, Alexa came. So it changed the whole industry. So now there were more uh, conversational kind of uh, things were uh, coming in the communication. The programs were able to uh, identify your sentiments, your intents, or what a customer is looking for. So as for the gaps, the AI is filling. So the top priority nowadays is the customer experience for every industry or every, uh, you can say, uh, company or whoever is a manufacturer. So the customer, is he satisfied? How we are dealing with the customer? So the bottleneck is we humans. Uh, let's say there is a huge uh, number of calls are coming and people are getting frustrated. Your customers are uh, not happy. So how can we find this all? So the answer was conversational AI that can automatically detect the experience of the customer their intent, how are they feeling? So this was a huge leap that it is coming into being right now. And uh, mostly it is used in the call center industry. So we came a long way, I should say. It has certainly come a long way. And like you said, it's a technology that's actually been around for a long time. But uh, Anil, if I can come back to you, you know, to, to look at how the technology behind conversational AI works today. You know, like um, Away said, you know, many of us, we've used Siri, we've used these kind of voice assisted um, devices and applications. So how does all of that actually work? Okay, great question. Um, I think uh, going back to Oasis story about how Alan Turing started with his uh, uh, you know, his paper, which actually talked about why machines should be able to talk back to you. Uh, it was an inconceivable at that time. Um, but IBM, I think, picked up this experiment sometime somewhere in the mid-90s. And they started to study the ability of computers to start to understand and eventually respond to questions like a human could. The whole idea was create a human alternative to be able to think like a human being and answer questions like a human being. But be able to process humongous amounts of data at the back end. Uh, there was this experiment by IBM, they called it Watson, uh, and we had a Jeopardy game which was played between this computer and the two best players in history. And guess what? In the second attempt, I think, they actually beat the two best humans on, on actually being able to answer questions faster, understand the relevance of the question, go and fetch the data and, and spit it out before uh, two extremely smart human beings could. So. <clears throat> So when you talk to start to imitate and when you start to give answers on a chatbot that's in real time, the chatbot experiences that we're having today are often not the best. Uh, there's this whole concept that always talked about in 70%, 80% of conversations are happening in a contact center. 
those data elements are not being harnessed to be able to understand the patterns of what the customer is saying and then go and address that even before the customer has said beyond a point. Now, a customer might ask the same thing in different ways. Like, I've lost my wallet. I've lost my credit card. Uh, you know what? My credit card got, or my debit card got swallowed into the ATM. All of this means an intent. Now, if you look at a bank, you have about 250 to 300 intents on why you would call into a bank. And about 20%, the 80-20 rule, about 20% is just addressed, uh, you know, taking up about 80% of the questions that actually are asked to a bank. If you club all of that together and have ready answers, be able to fetch the customer's data, uh, go into the bank account, and then they have a follow-on question, can I afford that Ferrari that's sitting out there? Uh, then it might you might want to say that your salary has to go up let's say twice to be able to afford that in the next three years or whatever. So I was personally involved in a couple of experiments and we uh, looked at understanding Arabic. Now, Arabic is a hard language. It's spoken different in Egypt. It's spoken different in the Levant. It's spoken different in the GCC. How do we get all these nuances to work for you? So what we've actually done, and we go back to the good old concept, start with a basic concept of what we can do for a bank one bank is not different from the next one, uh, not very different. And then we start to look at the data elements and start to differentiate them. So uh, there's the what a bank does, where the, where the customers are calling in from, and then start to tailor those experiences based on what that question is, getting together data. Now, we've built uh, our own ASR engine, the automated speech recognition engine, for example, in Japanese. It took about three months. To, to build it, and then another three to six months to actually make it work in a client environment. Again, it's data. We've done Tagalog, we've done Bahasa, and various flavors of the Indian language. Imagine somebody from Bangladesh talking to a Japanese-speaking English speaker. They oftentimes don't understand each other simply because the accents are so different. Now, you can have different flavors of the language, and all of that is what concepts like Siri started to build in. Uh, People curse it, but if you look at the humongous amount of backend data that they're fetching, first of all, understanding what the intention of the caller was, uh, it's all about training, it's all about data, and beginning to understand what your customer is really, really asking you in a contact center, whether it's a chat or a chat bot or an email. And th that is so fascinating to hear, you know, about all of the different ways that you really have to consider language, and l the language has been. Um, adopted uh, here as well, Anil. And, and so just a quick question, how many different languages um, has uh, conversational AI, has it taken in, you know, up until now, just, you know, out of curiosity? It's about 110 languages on record. Uh, so you build a, a base model and then you start to adapt to different languages. For example, South African uh, English, is still English, but it has a very poor accent. So we actually start to build in a, a, a specific one for South African English. So out of this 110, about six variants could be just English, right? Because the idea is not to understand every language. This is not a language learning machine. This is a conversational AI for a bank, for a telecom, for an insurance company, for a healthcare company in a hospital system, or for a government that's looking to efficiently actually harness voice conversations or chat conversations to spit it out in the language that this person has spoken to you in. Fascinating stuff. I love it. And we're going to continue the conversation. But before we do, we actually have some live polls that are going to be running throughout the webinar. And we would love for you, our audience, uh, to get in there. It's on the side of your screen. Just click on the polls and you'll see our very first question there for you. There it is appearing on the screen. And Question number one is this, have you used or are you currently using any conversational AI and analytics tools? You can choose either yes or no, get your votes in there. Let's have a look and see where everybody stands on this. And I have a feeling that, you know, many of us, if we would only realize it, are actually using conversational AI on a daily basis. So while everybody's getting in there on this poll, I'd love to ask you now, always about the different applications of conversational AI, because as you said, we are in fact using it quite a bit already. 
as it is. So talk to us about the applications we're already using and, and some of the unexpected places that we may not already think of. Uh, I think a better question will be where we cannot apply conversational AI. <laughs> So we are having a conversation right now. So theoretically, we can replace this entire conversation with a conversational engine. So uh, well, that but, has me worried now. Always, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we think actually that when the human we are talking or speaking to each other, it can be replaced by conversational AI. But it needs, of course, a data, as Anil mentioned a lot lot of data and lot of training so the time is gonna come inshallah it will be so uh, there are actually a uh, conversational AI can be uh, used at many places so we can have uh, automated uh, customer interactions where customer can uh, ask uh, basic questions or even some of uh, complex questions like uh, uh, you know, he want to book a ticket he would like to go to a hospital and uh, looking for if the uh, a doctor is available, we can replace the AI, uh, the IVRs with the conversational AI engines. So this technology can uh, reduce a load on uh, workforce also. Uh, basically, it can be used in the marketing and the sales activities. So uh, let's say there is a customer and he is going through the website and just looking at the products. So there can be a bot. So this is AI can be a bot. It can track what he's interested and then proactively he can offer him some discounts. We can make campaigns on this one to give some other options to buy if uh, he is not finalizing his, his decision to buy something. So uh, there can be this is one of the application. Uh, there can be a sentimental analysis inside uh, the AI. So if a customer is feeling uh, not happy and he's upset from something or he's happy, so this technology can also uh, detect it. And uh, according to this, it can, uh, you know, uh, paste some of the things if you are in the chatting, uh, some of the words that will empathize the guy, or it can transfer it to some human. So there is multiple uh, things uh, can be done. Uh, we can check in for a cruise or a flight. We can uh, arrange some roadside assistance. So the list is very long. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, that it can be used at any place. So nothing is specific for it or no specific industry or applications are there. Like you said, there are so many applications and uh, I know you know, it's interesting because not all conversational AI applications are created equal, are they? Um, yeah. You know, talk to us about some uh, of the applications which, you know, hopefully will do a better job than the chatbots that are available on many websites or even, you know, the, the phone bots that uh, some of us uh, have been used to speaking to. but often leave us confused and frustrated. So, you know, talk to us a little bit about that and, and what's missing in those kind of scenarios. What needs to change uh, for a better experience? Great. So we're trying to break this down and it's been happening for a while on how do we actually serve the customers best. Always touched upon it for customer experience. Uh, so CX in itself uh, has been around for just about 10 years. We've had CXOs as the chief experience officers just coming into the business uh, not very long ago. So there was customer service and then there's customer experience. And then there's this whole customer experience that has been become a big cloud of digital. Then there's cloud technologies and all of that coming together. So uh, how do we create a method in this whole madness, right? So uh, the conversational AI is not just about voice bots. There's chat bots which have been coming in, as you said, they kind of fade away after some time. They answer a few questions. But just the other day, I was doing a booking uh, for a flight, uh, uh, actually a budget airline flight from uh, Bali, to, from Indonesia, Jakarta to Bali. I was really surprised at how how quickly it was able to fetch data from the back and come and, and feed it down and the entire chat conversation without actually popping into a human being. 
Now, just look at the interplay of all of these different technologies. You have apps uh, where you're chatting from, or you have a chat which is just there, but it's being hardly used. So let's say I have an app for uh, a telecom, and I call in to the guy and say, listen, I want to actually buy a new phone. Uh, and a chat conversation on a phone cannot fulfill that conversation because the guy wants a green phone that Apple's just launched. And how do we get him to see the, the shade of that green? So what I say is just look into your phone right now. I sent you a link and you open up that link. And then there's a picture of all the five Apple phones out there with different, uh, uh, you know, resolutions with different colors and with different capacities, etc. You pick on that phone, click on it right there and say, I'd like to buy this right now. Uh, your credit card details are already here. Click here and uh, there's an installment plan. Do you want to pick up a two year plan or a three year plan? Click on two year plan and it's it's done and dusted and you get an invoice. And that's that's how it works. So there's this interplay of conversational AIs that are happening. And that's what's, you know, breaking the, the silos that you said there's a chat part. So how do you get all of these to interoperate, if you like? So let's face it. If I could make a human being do all of this in record time, you have problems like industry churn. Contact center agents don't last. It's not the most easy job uh, to do. So you tend to have a lot of churn within the industry. If you could make that agent's life better, feed them with real-time information, feed, feed them with you know, deep information about what you would otherwise have to be you know, you know, uh, you know, swiping through different applications. So let's see if we can break this down. Step one, everybody wants to know why the customer has called and why they chatted in, right? First, understand if you can do a self-serve where the guy can just pay a bill and get out of the system. Nobody wants to talk to an agent if it's something simple. See if you can do that first. Second, as they land with a chat or with an agent, you understand the intent. Of why is this person actually trying to call us? And then send them over to a salesperson or to a chatbot or to the website or a live uh, you know, a person. The document, this whole thing actually takes time. So you have an agent, you, you can do an AI powered after call summarization uh, where the agent is actually capturing all that the person has said. Now, if you are able to complete that conversation without having to go through multiple hoops, you give the agent one single screen, from that single screen, the person is able to understand who you are, what you said the last time, and pop in and say that this customer is really angry. He's been yelling about the service that he's got. And this is what we'd like to do next. And then walk through the customer, bring emotion, bring sentiment, and make this sound like an easy experience for the customer to get through. And those are some of the pieces that were missing. And then wherever you can complete the transaction easily, for example, you have to send out a new SIM card, you know, just press a button and that whole process is a robot that takes over. And so there's add to the chatbots, bring robotic process automation. So what we talked about and what you just mentioned, different silos, different chats, and different ways of conversing. But when you bring AI and data and the customer at that point in time and the customer is engaging with you, that's when you want to bring all of this to bear. So automation is a big part of what we do. So listening to all channels, real-time assistance, use data to give feedback, summarize all of that's happened, store that so that you can use that the next time the customer calls in. RPA and promises kept being done automated. Uh, that's a big one. And you continuously analyze what the customers are saying, what they want, what, they, what they're trying to tell you through millions of calls. And that deep analytics prepares you for the next call to personalize that call uh, and actually give that experience that the customer thinks it's actually as good as a human, a sentient bot, if you like, uh, answering you. That's really the ultimate aim, isn't it? So always, you know, to Anil's point there, the thing that differentiates human to human conversations is that immediate understanding of intent and emotion. And technology hasn't always gotten that right. So how does conversational AI interpret emotion and intent in real time? This is a good question, actually and it affects a lot on the customer experience. Uh, this technology tries to decode the emotional tone of the conversation. So it uses some uh, advanced language algorithms behind. Uh, so it works mainly by sensing the tone and it quantifies the feelings of the customer. So it can be through uh, uh, omni-channel uh, communications. 
so in call center you know there are uh, people are can be chatting they can make a call or they are sending emails or some sms or multi channel or omni channel communications are happening so uh, this technology what it does it tries to spot the emotional triggers from the conversation so if someone as i was mentioning before if someone is really he saying please i need help so if they he is communicating by a chatbot chatbot can identify that oh the guy is in stress and he needs some uh, uh, some cool down or uh, something uh, to talk so uh, it can identify this also it, what it does it can see the mood of uh, the the guy by the conversation or by a recording of the voice uh, so it can feel that okay the i cannot handle it I mean the it bot cannot handle it so what it will do it will uh, give it to a human so it will be seamlessly handed over to an agent so you will suddenly feel that okay you are asking some questions and suddenly uh, someone comes in and he says hi my name is awes and i can help you in this this and then suddenly he disappears so it's a hybrid kind of model so uh, uh, this technology can understand these things specifically when there is peak times and there is a lot of load uh, happening on the call center so uh, it can check the customer feelings and it can see that the quality is maintained so this is one of a uh, 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 positive point that the uh, let's say a supervisor or someone is not supposed to be all the time listening to it and see the quality is maintained and everything is done properly so conversational ai can automatically detect this and can inform the managers or the guys behind it the technology so uh, what we can say to be honest that the most critical uh, this is a most critical part for uh, conversational ai's future and stability so if it can uh, understand the intent and sentiments it will be a successful technology and currently it is showing that yes it is a positive thing that's happening so there are uh, many solutions who are struggling to provide good results and it is pre predicted that with the long term use of ai and of course more research is uh, required it will be able to achieve these goals and less human interactions will be there and mostly it will be uh, automated uh, responses thank so. you so much for that always and uh, I, I love that we're seeing already questions coming in for you both, for Anil and always, if you have a question uh, for our speakers today, don't forget to pop those into the questions tab to the side of your screen. And we are uh, doing some polls as well. Our poll that we uh, had earlier, have you used or do you continue to use any conversational AI or analytics tools? 70% uh, said yes and 30% uh, said no we have a second poll question for you now where we are asking do you believe conversational ai can resolve complaints and provide quick answers autonomously as well as a human can so the different uh, possibilities here are yes or to some extent or to a large extent let us know your thoughts on this question it's really the ultimate question i think do you believe that conversational ai can resolve complaints and provide quick answers autonomously as well as a human can. That is our next poll question there. And uh, keep sending in your questions for Anil and always, and we will be coming to those towards the end of the webinar. Now, Anil, talk to us about the other advantages of, of conversational AI. So how do you scale personalized and superior customer service experiences using conversational AI and how does it work across different digital channels as well? So it's it's consolidated. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. I think you hit a few of the key words is consolidation, uh, scale, personalization. Now, if you look at mass and then you talk about personalization, they, it almost sounds like an oxymoron, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you personalize en masse? Okay, that's the question. Now, um, this is, this is the million dollar question and uh, we're beginning to see uh, a crack uh, and how we can take a shot at this. Now, let's take uh, a simple 
uh, experience that we have very often, where we just get a call in the middle of a meeting, uh, or as we are sitting to put our kids to bed, let's say, uh, a call comes in saying, hey, I'm listening, listen, I'm trying to sell you something. And this can be so annoying. And you weren't interested in the service uh, in the first place. Uh, and a general response to that outbound call coming through is, guys, just, I'm not interested. Please take me out of your list. Now, the point is, uh, maybe I really was interested. It was just wrong timing. And the best time to actually catch me would be when I'm actually calling in for a service. So let's say I call in uh, and I, 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 let's say I've been uh, looking to buy a phone and I've been browsing the website and I've looked at various phones. And that's when I actually call in and say, hey, listen, I'd like to adjust my phone bill and look at a new plan uh, from, uh, from the next time, uh, uh, from the next month. And that's when you actually get a feedback from the agent gets feedback saying that this person's called and been checking about various phones. He's been checking mostly with Samsung phones. These are the various offers we have going and then ping that to the customer. Now, if I were to analyze all of the calls that are coming to the millions of calls, not miss a single call. And when a particular customer calls in, I can do that also. When a person is making an outbound call, if I were to get a series of, of 50 names in the morning to call into 80% chance that this person is interested in buying a product or service for the following reasons, there's a good chance that, that those calls will not be spam calls, right? You're getting something that you're really looking for, and there's a good chance of converting that sale. You have different situations where somebody's got a, a siloed app, which is a, co a collections app that is trying to reach out to somebody who owes the bank money. But at the same time, he calls into the credit card department and gets an extension of credit on their credit card. These two have to come together. Now, this is when all of the data actually comes together in different apps and tells you, hey, this guy could be a potential risk if you give him an extended credit because he already owes us another half a million from uh, on a home loan, let's say. So when it comes to uh, understanding what data analytics can do for you, it's best to make all the sales agents at a level where they are able to, to address all of the questions as good as your best agents, let's say, or your best sales guy. The second is agent supervision. It's kind of very limited. Uh, the person can just, if there's been a flare up in a conversation, the agent supervisor steps in, uh, that's randomly done. How, how could you make that more scientific? NPS, CSATs, these are all done through surveys going out. We have Survey Monkey, we have calls going out. How can we bring all of that to bear where we don't actually call out, but we just get uh, the AI telling us what the NPS score is? Uh, I was talking about getting that list of 50 top names. These are propensity models built on this data to actually tell you this is a high propensity that these people would actually be interested in this service. There's a high pro potential that this person has actually lost his job, wants to pay you back, but uh, you can restructure their loan. So rather than pissing off a customer by, by saying, hey, you owe me so much money and you better come in and pay it or I'm going to take you to the cops or, the, or issue a legal notice on you, uh, you could tell them, sir, I know you lost your job. Should I put your loan on hold for the next six months because uh, uh, next time your, uh, your salary drops, I'll reopen it, but you'll get a six months allowance and I'll recalculate your EMIs for the loans to come through. So these are the kind of things that you can bring through where you're making that mass data be personalized to that particular individual who's lost his job and apply that at that point in time when he or she reaches out to you uh, when they're in trouble. So uh, AI can use a lot of mass data to hyper personalize it, if you like. And just like always was talking about Amazon, Amazon, et cetera, this, uh, this patterns that we draw from there. But how do we apply that when the person's actually texting you or calling into your call center? That, that's the next best action that we want to give them. Absolutely. And then it's, this is how you tap into the data side of things that comes through the conversational AI, which is absolutely critical for businesses. And like you said, making the right call, getting to the customer at the right moment, it can make all the difference, truly. Uh, and so uh, I'm loving the questions are coming in uh, as we speak. Always, if I can come back to you and, and ask you about the industries. <laughs> that can most benefit from this technology? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, actually, there is uh, no specific industry where it can be used or cannot be used. So where there is a customer service, 
this technology can be used. So uh, you can use this it. There's a, an interesting, actually, there's, I'm kind of having a look at the questions that are coming in. There's one that's asking about AI capabilities in human resources. So is there anything specific for human resources that we can look at there? So uh, it depends now in human resources, like what kind of uh, actions you want to do or what are your goals? So let's say if we take it out on a other way that there is a load on the company and we have to hire more, more people and there is a cost affecting the HR. So you can use the conversational AI and the load on your uh, human will be decreased. So it's more will become a technology based uh, solution. Hmm. So if uh, this is Back the to that, uh, to what always just said, uh, you have one job application today, and you have 500 applicants, right? So uh, you you have, uh, we have built a bot, which actually sits in on a video conference like this, analyzes emotions, analyzes behavior, and analyzes what the person, uh, uh, you know, model is at that point in time. If it's a sales situation, it, it, it highlights when a person showing interest in a particular part of the presentation or when they're not. So you can apply this in recruiting, for example, uh, in a big way uh, where it analyzes face. So we the, the bot that we're talking about analyzes facial uh, characteristics. It analyzes expression. It analyzes the speech. It analyzes emotion, sentiment, and the tone of voice. Uh, so uh, that's just another area. So the question on HR is, is great when it comes to analyzing candidates that come in through LinkedIn and otherwise in, in the hundreds and you have to sift through them. So uh, that's that's an area where, where we can definitely look at using uh, conversational AI. Sorry. Yeah, so, uh, yeah I was uh, mentioning about the industry. So thank you very much, Anil, for adding this. So it can be used in the food industry. We can, uh, uh, let's say you want to place an online order and the bot, it knows your old orders or your choices you like uh, uh, chicken, meat, or uh, you are a vegan. So this all depends on your uh, previous choices. So it can suggest you what is uh, more uh, on the menu. So you can place an order. It will also have the data from the previous, like where your delivery was done, what's your name, your cards, all these. These are basic, uh, you know. So it can be more intelligent on this one in the food industry. Airlines. You can do uh, reservations, you can check about the availability of uh, the planes, tickets, about plan your holidays, this all can be done. Uh, FMCG sector, supermarket chains, let's say Lulu, Panda or Danube, they can use this one also. So you can uh, approach the customers and you can tell them what we have to offer you depending on your persona that was built with the data that was collected in your last transactions. Healthcare is one of a big uh, 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 sector that can uh, get benefit from uh, this technology. The patients, they can call, they can make appointments, they can reschedule. Even some kind of uh, basic checks can be done with the bots. As uh, Anil mentioned before that for the interview, there are some bots. So for the pre-check, we can have a bot also that will uh, develop the basic symptoms from the, uh, from the patient. So you can just call and you can mention, okay, I have a running nose, I have a fever. So some kind of basic data will be collected. So before he reached to the doctor, doctor will have this idea that, okay, this patient is suffering from this uh, uh, issue. Marketing and sales, so it's not a specific industry. It is everywhere for every industry. So we can get a benefit uh, from this one. So mainly customer interactions with any business. Conversational AI plays its part. So uh, it's very helpful uh, in this sector. Yes, it, it certainly has a huge role to play no matter what industry uh, you are in. And so Anil, you know, people expect a, a world-class customer customer service experience from even the smallest companies. So is conversational AI only for larger companies? I know we've mentioned that, that you know, Unifor, for example, works with a lot of the world's biggest companies or can smaller companies benefit from this technology too? 
That's a great question. Uh, when you talk about scale, you talked about large amounts of data. It typically alludes to large companies that have large customer bases, huge portfolios of products, etc. So uh, to be perfectly honest, yes, large companies have the, the data that actually feeds uh, all of the AI that goes in. Uh, what we are doing with smaller companies is we work with uh, BPOs around the world that manage contact centers and back office operations. They use our technology. And they use it to break this down to smaller companies that have, let's say, 20 agents, 30 agents, uh, or 50 agents. Uh, we talk about mid-size being between about 100 to 500 agents. So even a large bank that has the benefit of the data, uh, uh, the large banks would benefit more. Uh, the smaller packages that we go through BPOs uh, are broken down. Uh, but if you look at uh, opportunities for sales, there could be uh, the ROI in large companies is often calculated based on how much agent time they're saving. How, how quickly can I get uh, this customer service and uh, out, out of the IVRQ? Uh, those are small pennies and cents savings. But small companies are using AI to actually figure out, uh, let's say, sales. We have 100 sales guys that are going out there. Uh, so sales becomes a big part of where these expense on the technology is really small but you can collect huge amounts of sales uptake, looking at just the number of uh, sales dollars that that sales agent brings in. Uh, similarly, in collections, you have when a bank is writing off millions of dollars, there are BPOs going and saying, you know what, I'll take only a piece of your, your non-performing assets, your loans that haven't been paid back. I'll take a piece of that action and come back to you. So even small organizations, actually go to uh, to end banks and they're, they're not more than a hundred people uh, but they can still use the technologies to use the the power of the data and what it tells them so it's not limited to just large companies it is just going to be really vital and really important for for every company really to to use this you know this is this is data that they can have access to that can help them um, to make the most critical business decisions that they need to make. And so uh, a ways to, to that you know, question, how does conversational AI help? We've talked about this a little bit, but if you can talk about it a little bit in more detail in terms of marketing and sales efforts as well, how does it help in that regard too? So I will say Hicks law states that greater the choices, the longer a person takes to reach a decision. So nowadays we have uh, sellers, a lot of companies are selling uh, products and things. So there is many choices for the customers. Mm -hmm. So they, they get just confused what to do or what to buy. You have noticed it. Let's say you want to buy a television and there is so many choices, so many brands. So you are just confused what to do. So it affects the sales and marketing. So conversational AI can be used from social media preferences of the users, of the customers. So it can detect, the bots can detect what you are interested. Let's say on social media, you are posting for some product. So it gets an idea. Yep, that guy is interested in this uh, product. Then features. So in marketing, based on this, campaigns can be created. You can reach the customer when he is there and he wants to buy something. So you can, based on his preferences, you can uh, show him the products. And, uh, you know, it also affects on the emotion and sentiments of the person. What was his intent? So if he uh, buys a wrong product, of course, he will not be feeling happy. So basically, it's all on the data side. So how the data was collected, how it is uh, uh, you have uh, shown to the people what they are interested in. And uh, most of all, the automation, it uh, frees your essential resources. That's employees. So they don't have to do all these monotonous mind uh, numbing jobs. So they can just do uh, the automation, get the data. You can use them for more research. Uh, to make the campaigns. So uh, this will uh, really be helping the marketing and sales industry. 
Absolutely. And uh, our poll that we have had up, poll number two, where we've been asking you if you believe conversational AI can resolve complaints and provide answers as well as a human can, uh, about 14.3% said yes. 71% said uh, to some extent and, and uh, another 14% said to a large extent uh, they felt it definitely did as well. Very interesting um, answers from people here. And we have a final poll question for you going as well. Are you looking for conversational AI and analytics tools to improve your customer experience at your company? Yes or no? Get that in there. And let's get into some of the questions that have been coming in uh, from our viewers here and mine who uh, gave us uh, that question earlier. Thank you so much. Asking about uh, whether uh, conversational AI can be applied, how it can be applied to HR. Um, th this this is a great question um, for Brian, again, uh, asking how is user privacy protected and ethically used to balance between business needs and user expectations? So actually, um, if we don't intrude into the customer's privacy other than the data that they've already volunteered. Uh, so if they've given the details to a bank, which has their home address and telephone numbers and a whole bunch of other details, it's only those details that we actually look into. When you call a contact center, you often told that this call is being recorded. Uh, and if, you, if you're not in, uh, interested in working through this channel, you can always move away. So we work within the framework of the organization that we're working with and what uh, uh, privacy and security uh, parameters are set with their customers. Uh, we do not impose any of our own to actually go and look at the data. Um, we have an interesting situation where we've started analyzing web calls as well. And again, it's the same situation. You don't get onto a web call unless you've accepted the terms of that web platform. In this case, uh, it could be Emmet or it could be uh, Webex or Zoom or Teams or whatever. So uh, it's not doing anything more than you've already given them and public domain information. Excellent. This one came in from Facebook from Umesh asking, can AI systems uh, that collect data slow down cu customer call experience if they're not well optimized? Uh, Awais, would you like to take this one? Uh, actually, uh, it uh, uh, yes, data slow down customer call experience. If uh, customer call experience, actually, th this is all uh, you know the systems that are collecting the data. So when a customer is calling, he is with the uh, IVR or uh, directly with the call center system. So it doesn't much effect nowadays. I mean you know the machines or the power of uh, machines is so high. So uh, uh, there will be no effect on the data collection. So data is already collected or there is different kind of multiple systems that are running uh, in parallel. So uh, it will be just fine for it. You will not be feeling any, any lagging or any issues in the calls. Actually, on the contrary, uh, the whole idea of having all of these systems is to push the whole process through faster. Uh, and today we have up to 43% reduction in what is called the average handle time where a person is speaking to an agent. Uh, we've got first call resolution rates, which are uh, you call in the first time and you're sorted out the first time. Uh, you don't have to keep calling back in uh, and people are calling you back. So to the point is that all of this data comes in handy rather than slowing things down. It preempts a lot of what the customer could be asking and actually reduces the time to interact. So on the contrary is my answer. All right, excellent. Because uh, yeah, as you would expect, as you would hope, that this would actually speed up customer yeah. Uh, yeah. calls that's and interactions and make them more efficient. Yes, yeah, yeah. That, that's the whole point of it. So Shamika asks, uh, can background noise affect AI's comprehension? Uh, actually, this is this has been sorted out a long time ago. So uh, when you have uh, uh, a headset, for example, that's a little more sophisticated than the ones that we use uh, at home uh, for personal use, those headsets by default cut out a lot of the noise in the background. Contact centers are fairly noisy places, uh, but we tend not to hear them. 
but yeah, that's built into the microphone. Uh, and we collect data in two types. One is in stereo, uh, where we get the, what the agent is talking, as well as what the caller is talking about. Uh, of course, in chat, it doesn't matter. We can disambiguate and ask questions and get to the bottom of the intent. But uh, quick answer, short answer is no, it does not. Not anymore. OK, another question, uh, this one from Man asking, um, and you guys have alluded to this already uh, during the webinar, that AI will be replacing jobs. So he's asking um, what jobs are going to be replaced and um, how is this going to be affecting people, uh, affecting customers uh, of other businesses? How will it uh, affect jobs? So, you know, we'd love to learn from you. What, what jobs do you think that this is going to be particularly impactful on? Well, this has been asked since the Industrial Revolution, right? Mm. <laughs> um, and uh, jobs have only increased. Uh, so this is uh, there's tons and tons written about it, probably not the best forum for that discussion. That, that could go on forever. Uh, but if you look at it, uh, uh, machines are not replacing people here. They are making people's lives, for example, the agent's lives better. Uh, so an agent still keeps their job, but is more efficient because they're fed with data. They're fed, they're empowered with the tools to make themselves uh, more effective and more efficient while doing their jobs. So uh, on one side, it's helping humans like agents to be more effective. Uh, since the pandemic, uh, the contact center industry has grown about 300 uh, percent, as in adding more jobs right to the contact center business. Um, when you talk about online businesses, have that has that really cut out jobs? It's just created more jobs and more people working from home and new businesses have sprung up. There are housewives doing recipes online. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that have sprung up. Uh, so I think there's no end to human ingenuity on what they can do with their time. Uh, uh, by and large, this has created a whole bunch of technology jobs, I can definitely say. Uh, and uh, eventually, I think um, more industries and more uh, influencers and all of that are just going to jump onto the bandwagon. So um, this is an, a separate discussion. But on the face of it, I think uh, uh, there will be more jobs created, uh, even the jobs that are lost because of more efficiencies here, they'll make up somewhere else. But it's not for me to answer that one. Great. This one is from Jackie, and uh, she's saying thank you so much, Anil and Oasa, uh, for introducing a relatively new technology that is conversational AI. Uh, she says that she hasn't seen, um, she hasn't had particularly great experiences with conversational AI. Uh, sometimes it hasn't been the most successful, and she says maybe it will take years more to develop. So I'd love to know from you, Anil, you know, in response to that, you yeah. know, what do you think about Jackie's experience and, and what does that mean for businesses that would like to implement it now? Is this something that takes time, but then that investment then pays off uh, in a massive kind of way? Because, you know, it's all about, as you said, you know, giving this technology time and then the data that is reaped mm -hmm. um, brings about fantastic changes. So talk to us a little bit more about that. Yeah, great question, Jackie. I personally have built uh, AI bots, which I've not liked, OK? Uh, I love the honesty. Well done. <laughs> uh, let me start with that. Uh, fact of the matter is, if you're looking uh, at the maturity scale of most bots, uh, they don't really live up to the hype that's been created by many of us or who are peddling, if, you, if I may, this technology. Um, but th this is not something that starts to work from day one. L let me warn you that if you start working with a bot and expect it to be in three months' time, super duper efficient, understanding everything, just whizzing through a transaction, uh, it's not happened unless, unless the organization that's invested in the bot constantly invests in making the bot smarter increases the accent uh, capacity to handle more accents and more uh, tones and all of that that comes in. Uh, I've, I've been doing this for about uh, 11 years now. Uh, and what I've noticed is uh, that the bots are not being invested in. For example, 
uh, if you have to train a bot to understand you better and to send you to the right place in the IVR, that kind of training is not being invested in. People just assume that you get it running like any other product and it goes out of the garage uh, zero to 60 in three seconds. Not going to happen. So you mentioned Emirates NBD, FAB, Eti Salat, etc. I would say these are in the early stages of the uh, implementation cycle. Uh, some of them are investing, some of them will continue to invest, and some of them just fall off the bandwagon when it comes to investing further in that. So Jackie, to answer your question, I'm with you on that. It's not conversational AI is tending to get uh, a little sloppy in some areas, but if you invest in making them more personalized, if you invest in making the systems around it, like the CRMs and all of the data capture that comes through the back end and feed to the front end to that agent experience while it's happening in, uh, in motion, that's when you start to see the effectiveness. Now, I talked about data earlier. Listening to a part of the calls and say my customers are happy because 0.03% said they're happy is making a wrong assumption there based on a very small data set. So I think the size of the data set has to be fairly large. And if they keep investing, uh, it gets better and better until it reaches a point where it's almost as good as human. Now, one last point, Jackie, you're comparing that bot to a human being, right? And that's that's a very tall order. Human beings are still far smarter than bots. It's getting there, but I still th think it's happening. But what's happening today is making the human beings who are picking up those calls smarter and not making the bot run the entire conversation. That's a mistake. I don't know if I've answered your question. You can chat uh, later. You can take my number, but that's a conversation uh, that's that's constantly, uh, you know, ad being addressed. As that's different. excellent. Thank, thank you for that, Anil. And so, you know, just as we end the, the come to the end of the webinar, just a couple of final questions for the two of you. Our ways to, you know, for, for those who are thinking about adopting conversational AI, talk to us about how that technology can boost a business's bottom line? A good question. And actually, that's the business. So uh, that's why we are looking for the technology. So at the end of the day, business needs solutions that can drive the revenue and bottom line growth. So conversational AI is reducing the customer service costs. So uh, it, is it is doing the tasks that normal humans are doing. So if we translate it to real savings, it's HR and personal costs and overhead costs. So this is reducing by dependency. Uh, so, so your dependency on human is decreasing and it's uh, transferring more to the technology side. And the customer experience, uh, it matters a lot. So it will be improved with this one. So you will have uh, uh, more customer loyalty and uh, most important from all of this is the boost in employees' mental uh, health and their morale. So they will have less load and uh, you can use them into some other uh, work in the company, let's say more analysts and uh, this kind of work to increase your uh, revenue growth. So lastly, as I said in my previous answers, more resources available for other endeavors. So we will have people to do other work and uh, less the, uh, the stressful jobs. So end of the day, it's uh, again a revenue and saving the costs. And Anil, finally, Unifor is the only company in the conversational AI space in the Forbes AI Top 50. And so as a leading company, talk to us about where you think conversational AI is headed. Uh, and what innovations can we expect to see in the near future? Right. I, I'll just finish up on one little point that Oase was talking about earlier. Um, how different is one bank from the other? How different is one insurance company from the other? How different is one telco from the other? It's pretty much exactly the same set of services. The reason that we switch from one company to the other is typically the experience. And the differentiator between two organizations oftentimes becomes the that experience, the customer experience that always talked about. So to me, the CSAT scores and all of that are a big part of that experience. However, uh, how you treat your customers uh, becomes a big part of a business uptake uh, that you're looking for. So how does it impact the business? It oftentimes defines whether you stay in business or are kicked out by your competitors because they simply take care of your customers better. 
That's one part. Now, where is all of this going was the next question. And uh, this is really a crystal ball question. But we have already, we've got two projects. Uh, one is what we call Q, which is a sales agent, which is when, let's say you're selling a high-end property to uh, a $10 million project to a family. What if I could tell you what the dad is thinking what the mom is thinking, what the kid is thinking when he sees the pool at the back, or what the mom is thinking when they see the size of the kitchen and the garden up front, what the dad is saying when he sees the, the financial data that's going into finance at home. All of those data coming at you in facial analytics, behavior analytics in real time when you're on a web call with that family is gold. Right. You know exactly at what time somebody is dropping off, somebody starting to look at their phone. And this can be applied in wealth management scenarios where a bank is trying to sell a, a billion dollar project or a syndicated loan uh, or a large a real estate property. So we have what we call Q for sales, which is analyzing on a web call what each person on the call is saying. That's one part. The other part that you see is the parts that we're doing right now is how can an insurance company listen to their customer and address them at that given point in time. This is bringing the data to bear. But if you look at where conversational AI is really going, it's going to a point where you can just call in, ask a question, and you're answered like a human being sitting at the other side. All your questions answered uh, and taken care of with the RPA bolted on, uh, with that person being assisted in real time. Uh, and customer service is not something you dread. And it almost becomes a pleasure. It's pushing it, but that's where it's going. That's absolutely amazing. And, you know, like you said, uh, if you can figure out what everybody's thinking, that really is priceless, isn't it? And it appears that conversational AI is moving in that direction. Anil Kumar and Oais Ahmed, thank you both so much for a fascinating discussion. Thank you. Great job, Sally. Thank you for Thank all the work. Thank you, Telly. And so as we come to the end of the webinar, remember, if you are looking to use conversational AI to give you an edge over your competitors, don't forget to talk to the team at Unifor, and they could possibly tailor a solution to your needs. So a big thank you to everybody, to our audience today uh, for joining in the discussion. This session is going to be available online on the Gulf News and AGNC through YouTube channels. So don't forget to subscribe there and you can share the session with family and friends as well. My name is Sally Musa for Gulf News. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.